Just give me a minute. Oh, hello everybody. Welcome back to Wi-Fi Ship at Christmas. My name is Tom and this time we're coming to you from my attic. So hi everyone and welcome back to Wi-Fi Sheep at Christmas. Hope you had a good Christmas and a very happy new year for 2020. Before I did Wi-Fi Sheep, I was better known for a quite successful exhibition model railway project called Thornton Gate. In fact, I even appeared in the December 2014 edition of Railway Modeler. However, since then, I've always wanted to combine my interest in computer with my interest in trains. In particular, can I incorporate Raspberry Pi and advanced digital operating systems into model railways? And that's what we're gonna have a look at today. And we're gonna start with looking at how a traditional analog model railway train set actually works. So I have the controller. This is plugged into the main. So we've got 240 volts come in and it's actually two controllers in one unit. So we're just concentrating on this regulator here and that's plugged by two wires to the track. If I take uh, what we call an analog locomotive or a traditional locomotive, which is the wheels are connected to a motor. So the electricity is picked up by the wheels and transferred to the motor. If I now apply voltage, as you can see, turn the voltage up, it's faster, stop. Has a polarity switch here, so forward and reverse. It just changes positive and negative around. Add power, the more power I add, up to 12 volts, the faster the locomotive goes. And let's say you now add a second locomotive, and now if I just add the same current through, they're both going to roll basically independently of each other, but there's no real control. Okay, so that's how analog works, but as you saw, it doesn't give you the sort of control that you need. Luckily, about 20 years ago now, a brand new digital system was introduced called DCC, or Digital Command Control. And now, I've been using DCC with a slightly more simpler controller, and this is what we actually used with Thornton Gate. So it worked with the N gauge, and also here it would be 00. Now, this EZ Basic system from Bachman had its limits. It works very well and is very robust, but you can't program anything or basically make any alterations with the digital system. It is the bare basic system. And I wanted something a little bit more technically advanced, basically. And that's where I found out about Sprog DCC, which is an adapter system for Raspberry Pi. So for this new digital system, we're gonna start with a Raspberry Pi. This is effectively a single board computer, or if you want it in more simpler terms, a self-contained complete PC on a single circuit board. And then we have a set of pins here called the GPIO, or General Purpose Input Output. Now, a Raspberry Pi doesn't have any onboard storage or memory to store an operating system or any applications. So for that, we use a micro SD card, like the sort you use in your camera, or phone, and that will act effectively as C drive if you were using a Windows PC, and the card slots underneath into the bottom of the board. This card already has the operating system, which is Linux, pre-installed, and it has the train operating software called JRMI, and I'll put links to that in the description. If you're not comfortable or familiar with flashing SD cards are making them up. You can buy pre-installed cards from various vendors that deal with model railways. To make this a digital train controller, what we need to add is this board here. And you'll notice it has a set of identical GPIO pins along one side, as well as a connector for power in and track voltage out. To make this work, all we have to do is connect the pins here into the sockets here. So basically the board, which is a custom PCB, sits on top the Raspberry Pi as a hat, hence why it's known as a hat board. If you're interested in how custom PCBs like this are made, check out our partners at PCBWay.com. A quick reminder about the PCBWay third PCB design contest. The competition is open and running now, with a deadline for entry on the 25th of April 2020. If you have a fantastic custom PCB design, why not enter top prizes from $1,000?
Already entries are pouring in from all over the world. So why not join them? For full details, see www.pcbway.com forward slash project forward slash events forward slash fur design contest dot htm. The best of luck. Now, as this is a PC type computer, it still needs a power supply and you can get these mains volts to micro USB power adapters. You need one with a decent bit of voltage on. This one, which is an official Raspberry Pi power supply, is five volts, 2.5 amps. Because it's a computer, it also needs some control in the form of a keyboard and mouse. Now what I have, instead of having a separate keyboard and mouse, I have this little wireless keyboard, which has a laptop like trackpad and buttons and it's wireless and it has a USB dongle and we put the USB dongle into the Raspberry Pi like that. And then for connecting, what I have is an old style PC monitor that I've uh, bought up here and that's not HDMI. The Raspberry Pi has the modern HDMI connection which is more used in your modern HD TVs. However, very cheaply off eBay, you can buy adapters that will go from HDMI to VGA, which is the old pin standard. So if you have an old flat screen monitor off your old PC or something lying around. Okay, so with that all done, let's set up and let's get running some trains. So we'll just bring the Sprog unit over to the track. Ideally, I'd probably want a proper case for this, but you can screw these boards either underneath the layer or you could actually put it inside your control box without too much of a problem. What I do need to do is now attach the voltage for the Sprog end of the unit. And this comes with a more hefty mains power trussle on which comes with the unit. And it has a mains plug on one end and this special green plug on the other. And it's four different connectors. Two ends of the power transformer are pre-wired in here and then I've added two wires which go onto alligator or crocodile clips here on the other end. That's gonna to go to the track and that will basically output the digital signal and voltage. And this one takes the voltage in to power the Sprog system. And all it does is clip into the top of the hat board. Now in order for DCC to work properly, every locomotive we use has to be chipped or converted to run digitally. So for example, here is a Backrun Class 37 double gauge locomotive. At the moment this runs on analog. We take the lid off. You see on the central PCB here, there's this little raised plate. This is a blanking plate. So with this plate fitted, this locomotive runs in a traditional analog mode as you would do on a normal train set. Now this is a very basic DCC decoder and you have the eight pins one side and you have to chip the other side. And this base is what converts this locomotive and makes it digital, hence you can actually program it and it will respond to digital commands from the Sprog system. On a locomotive like this, which is set up to run digitally, converting is very simple. All we have to do is remove this plate and then making sure that we get pin one, which is always the orange wire the correct way round. So the orientation on this is this way round. We plug in the decoder into the socket. Now we just have to tuck the decoder into the body and then we can put the lid back on and this locomotive is converted for digital. So now we've got our Raspberry Pi Sprog set up powered up. We need to give it a moment just to load into Linux. And if you use the build that I'm using for Raspberry Pi, links for that are in the description to this video, you should get a desktop appear like this on screen. And the JMRI software, including the Pro Panel and the Y Throttle, should load up automatically. So let's take a close look at what we've actually got here on the desktop. We have a systems console. This is the bit that tends to scare people because it looks rather complicated. It really is nothing to worry about. It's just giving you line by line information about what's going on on the system at any one time. So let's just minimize that. You'll notice that the actual desktop and the operating system look very, very similar to Windows. 
This is a version of Linux called Raspbian Pixel, and it's the stock version that is supported by the Raspberry Pi, so it's the official operating system, and it has a taskbar down the bottom here, and you even have a little Raspberry logo which acts like a start menu, and you've got all the extra things installed on the system, including things like web browsers, even a copy of Minecraft is on here for some strange reason, and you have a shutdown at the bottom when you want to switch off the computer. So it really is not as scary as it sounds if you're not familiar with Linux. It looks nine identical to Windows. Okay, I have on the track a locomotive. This is a Backman Class 66, and I want to add it to the system so we can control it from the Raspberry Pi. To do that, from my Pro Panel, I select the roster, and I'm going to create an entry, and it's going to ask me what type of decoder I'm using. Now, from memory, because it's good to remember what type of decoder, although it's a Batman locomotive, I think it's actually got a Hornby decoder in it. So I'm going to make a guess under digital that it's probably one of those. So we'll select that and we'll go open programmer. And let's just go to basic tab. Select long address and type in what the address for the locomotive. Every DCC chip has an address in it. So the active address for this one is 661. And again, change it there, 661. And then we need to fill in some information under the roster ID. So local ID, and this time we're going to put the full number in, which is 66089. Owner will we'll say EWS for the operator. DCC address, throttle speed limit, that's all fine for the moment. You can set a lot of this up and we'll say save the roster. So now if we go to tools, throttles, and we say new throttle, and from this pop up here, you see we now have the locomotives. So if we select 66089, we now just need to hit to turn the power on. And if there's no short in the system, you'll see it stays green with on there. Now back to our function panel for our locomotive. Let's see if this is going to work. Let's hit light. And as you can see, the lights have now come on. And then this acts as the throttle and reverser. So if I hit reverse, the lights will change go forward again. And now I should be able to open the reverser by clicking and dragging the slider. And the locomotive takes off. Now, you might be thinking it's all well and good if you've got the space to be able to set up a spare PC keyboard monitor, but if you're an exhibition layout, or if let's say you're a temporary layout, you don't have a permanent setup like I do up here, then you might need a more flexible or lightweight solution. We can access the system remotely from a portable device. In this case, I've got this iPad, this iPad 2, which is quite old now, but it will be sufficient for what we need. So with the Raspberry Pi running, what we need to do is go to our settings, and under Wi-Fi, you'll notice an additional network here, RPI JMIR shows up, so we'll select that, and that will then become our Wi-Fi network. As long as you use a Raspberry Pi free or later with Sprog DCC, it will create its own Wi-Fi hotspot that you can actually log into remotely. So if we now go back to our apps, and we need to use an app called VNC Viewer, which you can download for free from the App Store. So we'll select that. And you'll see I've already set it up here for Sprog DCC. Instructions of how to do this are all on the links in the description of the video. So if I now tap that screen, you can now see that we've got remote access via touchscreen to the full desktop of the Raspberry Pi, which means we can now do everything we did before but from an iPad. Now, sometimes we want to have handheld controllers to use when driving trains, and believe it or not, we can also do that with the Sprog DCC system, very similar to how we got the remote desktop working, the VNC, but we can use our iPhone, I have here, this is an iPhone 6, so there's all the apps, and again, if we do the same trick as we did with the iPad, so we'll go to Wi-Fi, 
and it's already detected the network. I don't know if you can actually see that on screen, but it's there. So if we now flip through, there's an app called Y Throttle Lite, which is again free. And this app will automatically connect to the software on the Raspberry Pi. So if we look at rosters, we've actually now got the locomotives, including the 66. And if I select the 66 and hit set, and hit my throttle, I then get a control set and a touchscreen throttle, allowing me to remotely drive the train from any smartphone device. You can now get more advanced decoders, such as this from Hornby. This is a TTS sound decoder. So it's the same digital type chip, but it has a speaker attached, which allows the locomotive to actually make physical train sounds, engines, air horns, that kind of thing. Go to keypad, and I'm simply going to type three because that's all it is. It's number three at the moment on the system and ask it to set. We'll go back to throttle and I now have a new throttle for Loco 3, which is my 37. And I now have options including lights and a series of function keys. So if I hit lights, we should get lights on the locomotive. And if I hit F1, I can actually activate the sound chip on board the locomotive. And you can hear it starting up. I've then got F2 and 3, which are air horns. And now if I open up the throttle, you'll hear the locomotive start to take off. There's the brakes being released. And we open up the throttle louder. There we go. Yeah, so this gives a really flexible system, so there's no wires everywhere, so you can just move around the room when or if you require. I have to stress, you don't actually have to use just Apple devices, the lower cost Android smartphones and tablets are just as capable and compatible with Sprog DCC. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thank you so much for your company. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe to us here on Wi-Fi Sheep. From all of us, a happy new year for 2020, and I will see you real soon, right here on the channel. Until next time, bye for now.